Hi, this presentation is part of a wider Copernicus user uptake strategy of the European Commission. One of the aims of the strategy is to stimulate the development and use of innovative downstream applications that incorporate Copernicus data and services. My name is Bruce McCormack. I'm here representing Eurogi, the European Umbrella Organization for Geographic Information. Our overall aim is to promote the widespread and effective use of geographic information. Eurogi was asked to identify a number of use cases of Copernicus which may be of interest to GIS practitioners. As part of this user uptake initiative, we provide five case studies relating to wildfire mapping, identifying urban housing densities, the identification of chlorophyll in near coast waters, the use of Copernicus for spreading fertilizer on farmers' fields, and this one, which focuses on the land cover mapping. In this video, we will demonstrate the classification of land cover types from Sentinel-2 data. The application was developed at the University of Maribor in Slovenia. Since the algorithm developed to identify land cover is still a work in progress, the author Associate Professor Domen Mongus could be contacted for further information, should you, the viewer, so wish. The basic idea behind the approach is to exploit the differences in the reflectance characteristics of different land cover types with respect to wavelengths, or so-called spectral signatures, measured at a single pixel level in Sentinel-2 images. As Sentinel-2 is a multispectral instrument, it is capable of capturing spectral signatures at 13 different wavelengths, or so-called spectral bands, with the resolution ranging from 10 meters to 60 meters. On the one hand, this allows users to derive a number of different indices, which may reveal valuable information about the state of vegetation, water, terrain, or a number of other spatial entities. In our case, we use this information to completely automate the recognition of land cover types. However, spectral signatures do not depend only on the spectral properties of the land cover types themselves, but also the lighting condition in which they are recorded. In this context, shadows are a typical example that may cause partial or even total loss of spectral information about the underlying land cover, a situation which may result in large classification errors. In the first graph, spatial signatures of different land cover types under shadow and non-shadow conditions are shown. It may be observed that in general, lower intensities are recorded in comparison with non-shadow areas. Perhaps the two spectral signatures of forests are the most obvious example here. However, a closer look reveals that the spectral signatures of meadows are almost identical to that of water. This phenomena is known as the overlapping of spectral signatures, especially since single land cover type may produce many different spectral signatures, as can be seen in the second graph, land cover identification can be a somewhat difficult task. In this demonstration, we will show how land cover type identification can be achieved using machine learning approaches. Our implementation was done in C++ with the help of OpenCV and GeoTIFF open source libraries. But first, let us download the data. For this purpose, we use the Copernicus Scientific Hub. We can then log in and we select the area of interest by drawing an orange rectangle and then just clicking search to see what data is available here. Or amongst many available data sets, we search for Sentinel-2 data and click on the URL associated with it. The downloading process will then start. The download data will be in TIFF format, so you can use it in any GIS tool that you normally use. And also, you can split the data into small tiles to make it easier to handle. In our case, all of this will be done by the algorithm automatically. First of all, the data will be divided into smaller 
tiles and the second derivatives of the spectral signature of each pixel will be automatically calculated. Such representations are so much more robust in relation to shadows and other types of noise within the data, as you can see on the graph on the right side. Several pieces of additional information will then be calculated, such as a co-occurrence matrix from image contrast, energy and homogeneity. This information helps greatly for the computer to understand, in inverted commas, what is the nature of the content of the image. The algorithm is designed to learn by itself what is in the image, and it does this by running through several iterations of the process known as boosting. This makes the classifier very easy to use, as only two clicks are required. First, the user must click on Run Learning, or load the existing knowledge base. Let us say that we will run the learning process, so we click on Run Learning. After each iteration, a message box will appear with a report about how much the algorithm has learned in terms of the accuracy that it can achieve. Although it starts with an overall accuracy of 77%, it can reach 88% in one iteration. The main reason for this is that the algorithm has learned to process large shadowed areas. In the next iteration, the accuracy of the algorithm reaches about 91%. Here, smaller shadows and soft transitions between shadowed and non-shadowed areas are coming into focus. During the next iterations, the process of learning will become slower because the algorithm is focusing more and more on the details. When the algorithm achieves 95%, it will stop iterating and be ready for using. Now we can select the idea, the data, that we would like to process. We do so by clicking on the Classify S2 button. In a few seconds, a new image will be created in the same directory that will contain classified land cover types. Here are some examples of classified images, where red represents built-up area and brown represents farmland. Blue represents water and light green represents meadows. Dark green represents forests. The classified land cover data can be downloaded in TIFF format into any GIS package, which not only creates the opportunity for further analysis of the land cover classes, but also the opportunity to add other data layers and so undertake further analyses. Hopefully, this presentation has demonstrated how land cover identification process can be completely automated using Sentinel-2 data. While the authors at University of Marabo will continue to develop algorithms using Sentinel-2 data, including image deshadowing, multi-temporal land cover monitoring, and change detection with integration of Sentinel-1 data, you're welcome to contact them for any additional information. Finally, Urogi would like to thank Doman and his team at the University of Marabo for providing this fascinating example of how machine learning algorithms can be applied to Copernicus data. Thank you very much for watching. <music>